Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen. Um, one of the really cool things I've got going on this year is I've uh, partnered with Bash University. This is something that uh, I've known Ike, Mike Iconelli for a long time, and we've been trying to figure out for years how we can work together. And so Bash University is Pete Glusix and Mike Iconelli's uh, kind of their baby. Uh, years ago, I went to one of their Bash University seminars. It's a two-day seminar they have, and I went to Nashville and uh, and, had, and went through that seminar. Probably one of the best things I'd ever done. I realized, helped me realize how much detail I needed to put into my videos to really make them worth your while. So, this partnership is really, really cool. What I'm doing is I'm taking their videos that they put on their website of these seminars or of the on-the-water stuff with the pros or of their live events, and taking them and taking them out on the water and showing you guys using some of their footage and using what I'm doing here, showing you guys how I put those videos to work on the water and make them make them work for me. Um, pretty cool. And also, they're giving me a, a kind of a coupon code or a promo code, and you can get like five dollars off a month for their monthly subscription. And I can't remember how much for their annual subscription, but you can get using that coupon code, you can get a discount on their. Uh, on their website and I've been a member of their website for a paying member of their website for two and a half years uh, since they right after they started and those videos have really helped me to fine-tune a lot of the videos that you guys have seen over the years so why not pay them back and help them out and at the same time get con more content from them so it's pretty cool so today the very first video um, is about a blade bait. We're in the middle of the winter time. I am down in Florida. That's why I'm in the short sleeve shirt. It was 28 degrees this morning. The sun's up. It got hot all of a sudden. So I stripped off my hoodie and my long johns and I put a t-shirt on. So, uh, but the water temperature is still really cold for these Florida bass. I don't know if this is going to work down here, but I'm at Bienville Plantation with the KBF guys, kayak bass fishing, covering the, uh, the, their, their 10 tournament, which is the top 10 in points, uh, guys fish a tournament uh, winner take all ten thousand dollars but anyway so that's why i'm down here so i'm here i went to a lake that nobody's on um and i'm going to show you guys how using the videos from bass university how to uh how to fish a blade bait all right so first of all the video i'm taking this from is from a live event that pete and, and mike did um with a guy by the name of steve carey who makes a blade bait called the binsky i don't have a binsky but i do have blade baits um but uh, they really went into great detail about uh, what the bait is, how to rig it. And we're gonna go through a majority of that through this video, um, but I'm also gonna have a link to the video down at the bottom and things like that. So, first of all, the equipment. A medium fast action rod. Um, you wanna have enough flex in the rod to make a good long cast. You wanna have enough flex in the rod to, um, to be able to fight these fish really carefully, but you've got to have a stiff enough rod to be able to react fast when they come at you. Because a lot of times they come up and they hit this thing as you're lifting it or as you're dropping it and you lose contact with it. Um, a high speed reel, eight one to one gear ratio reel. 12 pound test is ideal. 12 pound test, fluorocarbon or monofilament. I prefer fluorocarbon. Uh, in the video they talk about using monofilament because of the stretch and because it helps you to even fight the fish even even more uh, and you lose a lot of fish with this technique we're going to talk about a few things to do to prevent that all right so if you've never seen a blade bait this is what it looks like it's a piece of metal with lead molded to the bottom of it they are heavy they are a lot like a lipless crankbait when you cast them out and reel them back in um, but they you fish them completely different and uh, the way I fish them the way the video teaches you how to fish them is to kind of fish them like you would a hopping Texas rig it's tough for me to get my hoodie. That was dumb. Should have put it on the boat with me. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the blade bait. All the blade baits that I've seen have three holes or four holes. The Binsky has four holes. But uh, one thing that, that you've got to make sure you do, you've got to use a clip. If you don't use a dual clip, just those metal holes themselves are going to break your line. So that's why you use a clip. Uh, the holes themselves are pretty neat. Basically, the center hole, or if there's four of them, the two center holes will give you, it's kind of where you need to start. It'll give you the most vibration, the most consistent vibration, and, it's, and then if you uh, go to the front or the back hole, it'll give you a little flip. The front will actually come up and it'll, it'll instead of vibrating when you stop it, it'll flip over and it'll go right back down and it just, it gives you a kind of an um, inconsistent action both the front and the back one. So that's why they have three or four holes. 
Um, one of the things that you got to understand with this one is a lot of blade baits don't come with split rings. At least change the split rings or change to cut the hooks off that come with it and change it to split rings. Um, you'll, you'll catch more fish that way. But if you really, really want to, uh, to improve your catch rate on these things all the way up to almost 100%, uh, actually, um, Bass University put a video out by Seth Fighter that talks about instead of using split rings, tie your um, hooks on with braided line. And there's a specific way that he does that. But instead of explaining it to me, it's only about a four minute video. Let's just take a look at him and watch and have him explain to you how to tie that, uh, that braided split ring basically. I'm going to basically eliminate the split ring on there and make one out of braid. And then once I get her tied up, I'll show you the advantages of it. But what, what you're gonna need, I, I use 30 pound braid. You're gonna need a couple foot section of it, one for each hook actually. Fold it over, double it up, and you're also gonna need something to form your loop. I, I use a small Allen wrench. You can use a small screwdriver. Um, you just wanna make sure it's not too big. You wanna keep that loop fairly small. Just keep your hooks from falling and tangling up. But we'll take our blade bait. It's got the holes punched in it for the hook hangers. Doubled up the 30 pound braid. Run it through there. Take our treble hook. This is a number six VMC light wire. That's what I like to use on here. Drop it over that doubled up deal. You're also gonna need a lighter for this too. So um, make sure you got one of them. And then I'm gonna take this uh, Allen wrench and set it in there. I'm probably going to set this down to tie it. Okay, so we got our hook on there, lined through the bait, around the Allen wrench. Now I'm going to take this loop right here and turn it inside out to form another loop. Then run your tags through that loop and then cinch her down. And like I said, getting this real tight is the key. Work that back and forth on that Allen wrench. Get all the slack you can out of there. And then just finish it off with three overhand knots. But just make sure each time you tie one, you pull on each end and get it as tight as you possibly can. Okay, now we've tied our third overhand knot in there. Now before you pull the Allen wrench out, you wanna make sure you come in here with the scissors, cut your tag ends off, but you wanna leave those a little bit longer. We're gonna burn those with a lighter, so you wanna, you want them sticking out quite a bit. Um, and then wiggle this Allen wrench out. And I'll kinda Pinch them tags together. You need a lighter to finish this knot. And I try not to put the flame on the knot. Just get it, work it in close enough so it just starts to melt them. You want to melt those right down to the top of that overhand knot. Right there. Boom, you're done. Pinch it down a little bit. And then one thing I will do, I mean, just because it's, I know it seems a little sketchy. It's a braid loop instead of a split ring. Every time before I try it, I'll just Pull on it real good and hard. Make sure that knot's not gonna slip, not gonna come out, and you're ready to go. All right, so obviously that's one of those things that you have to do um, before you go out, is to, to tie that braided knot. And I did on one of them, and I lost it almost right away. I got it hung in a tree, and I did not bring my plug knocker. So big, big, big mistake. So I don't have one, but another, um, Another thing that I can do if I find that I'm losing them is I can actually add a second split ring to the bottom. I learned that from Chad Huber from Kayak Bass Mission is add a second split ring and it'll increase the amount of times that that hook can rotate before the fish throw it. It's not as good as those braided, not we're nowhere near as good as the, bra the braided loop, but it will help you in a pinch. got to the bottom. Okay, with this, when you're fighting with these blade baits, you really just gotta pamper them. You don't jerk, you don't anything, you just kind of reel them in. 
real slow. No change in directions, just kind of bring them to the boat, especially when they're good and cold. But you very seldom have them hooked really, really good. Nice. Yep, I got him hooked outside the mouth. So had I muscled him in and changed a bunch of directions while I was setting the hook or while I was fighting him, I probably would have lost this fish. That's what happens a lot of times, just outside the mouth. And what probably happened is I probably had this inside and then it hung and it's flopped out the outside. But first fish of the day, tough fishing. I may change lakes, go over next door to a lake that's a little bit clearer, a little lake called uh, Preston. And, uh, but you can tell, winter time, look, no color, straight silver, <laughs> white and silver. Nice, nice. But yeah, you really gotta be careful when you're, when you're fighting these fish. Got that one on the silver one. All right, so let's talk about the cadence that I'm using right now. Um, don't mind the loud reel. <laughs> I haven't cleaned it in two years. So it's, this one goes in the box to, to be cleaned as soon as I get to the house. But uh, basically what you do is you make your cast out and I'm fishing a bank, or a, 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 I'm fishing a shoreline that's about 40 degrees, 40 to 45 degrees, so fairly steep. It doesn't look like it right here because it's real flat, but it, this is a, a mining operation and they actually, there's a big slope that I'm fishing. I'm sitting at about 15 feet of water throwing shallow and uh, the, the key is to, um, is to throw it out there, let it sink, let it hit the bottom, lift it up just enough to where you hear, feel a few thumps on the, on the, or vibrations on the bait, and then let it fall back down on a semi-slack line, not on a straight slack line, but on a semi-slack line is what you do. A little pop, and then right back down. That's what I'm doing, that's how I caught that fish. Now, there's a lot of differences in cadences, and the things to, uh, to keep in mind is, when you get bit, how long was that bait sitting on the bottom? Did it get, you know, like this one, it hit the bottom and about a second and a half I got bit. Um, how long was it sitting on the bottom? How high did I hop it up? And how aggressive am I fishing? And I change those, th th these, those three things up as I'm fishing to try to figure out how, what the fish want. If I'm on a school and I know there's a huge school and they've stopped biting, I'll continue to change it. I'll change it from whatever was working and try something different. There's, I mean, a lot of things. You can hop it up, you can do a little shake at the top, you can do a double hop where you just pop it up and, you know, pop it, stop it, and pop it again. Um, there's several different things you can, you can try. You can leave it on the bottom for a long time. I can't count how many times a bass has picked a blade bait up off the bottom, especially when it's super cold and they're super lethargic. You know, you just leave it on the bottom. You might shake a little bit on a slack line, slack line like you would a shaky head. They'll just go over there and suck it up. Now when you set the hook, you've got to set the hook quickly. That's a piece of metal. It does not feel or taste or anything like a bait or a bait fish. So you've got to, as soon as that, bite, that bass bites, you've got to set the hook hard. So one more time, cast it out. <laughs> Dang, that thing is dirty. Let it sink to the bottom. Bring up your slack line. A little pop and I'm fishing it just like a Texas rig, just to pop and let it settle. Pop and let it settle. And I'm following the fall. If it's a if it's a steep bank, I'm following the fall with the with my rod. I'm always trying to keep it in that semi-slack bow. I don't want the line to lay on the water, but I don't want it to be tight either. Okay. I must be sitting on one of those underwater points because it is not falling and you know it's staying the same depth. But had I, if I was fishing deep, that was exactly what I'd do. I'd follow the bait down, trying to keep that line as, as semi-slack as I could. That way I can feel the bites. I get the, a vertical drop uh, as much as I possibly can. And, uh, and can, you know, just can feel everything and know exactly when it's on the bottom. Preston 
This, is, this lake's got a lot clearer water. It's got a little bit of grass in it to filter that water out and get it clear. Now I'm just going to try to find deep water. Um, mainly because that's I'm looking for bait, and that's where the bait's going to be. It's going to be in deep water because of all the conditions, the cold, the the, the flat fact that it's Florida. The, the shad just love to go down into these deep holes. So that's what I'm going to be looking for, and that's where I'm going to be working this blade bait. Well, that was a bust. Um, I was hoping to catch a big one in this video for you guys, but I didn't. But uh, I've got to get back for the for the check-in for the uh, kayak tournament, see how the guys did. I know somebody caught a monstrous 24-incher uh, just before I left the cabin. So, But uh, be sure to check out Bass University. Um, I, like I said at the beginning, they are... Uh, they've been a huge help for me to me over the years, and this is just some way I can I can uh, return the favor to them. Like I said, I got a coupon code. And I'm gonna try to get it, put it up in the little cards, um, and uh, so you can you guys can just click on it and go go directly to that link and uh, and sign up for uh, Bass University. You will not be sorry that you did. It is uh, slap full of some of the best instructional videos from these uh, elite pros, and uh, and they they. They have a lot to add. They have, they know all these little details and all these things that I don't, and I'm constantly learning stuff from them. So go check them out. Um, sign up for a couple of months, sign up for a year. But uh, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing, introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go ahead and catch some fish. Have a great day. We'll see you.